You know, we're talking about uh, the state of the business climate in the state of Michigan, and specifically looking at the city of Detroit and growing business, and, and really a, a large portion of entrepreneurs and attracting talent to the city of Detroit and retaining it there. So joining me now to talk about that is Dennis Archer, Jr. He is the chair of the Mackinac Policy Conference this year. Dennis, it's good to see you. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Good, this good. is a nice kickoff of the uh, of the day. It's fantastic, with the exception of the rain. But with the exception of the rain, but we're all safe inside the parlor right. of the Grand Hotel here. And I'd like to welcome Shelly Danner. She is the Program and Strategy Director of Challenge Detroit. Shelly, it's good to see you. Thank you. And you're going to have to tell us a little bit about Challenge Detroit. Happy but I, to. But I want to bring in Adrian Tanone. He is an entrepreneur. He's a chamber future leader and works in the mayor's office. So yes, Adrian, yes. it's good to see Wonderful you. Wonderful to be here. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. You know, when you think about the Mackinac Policy Conference, Dennis, usually you're usually thinking about big business and CEOs walking around here. But there right. really has been in the last five years or so a push to focus on entrepreneurship and getting those small business owners is involved really in what's happening, which is a, a huge part of the success of the state of Michigan and in bringing the business up back. Yeah, I think that there now is a recognition that a lot of the innovation and thought leadership come from smaller companies. Um, if you look at Apple Computer, if you look at Microsoft, they all started, some in garages, some as very small businesses. And so we have to look at how the state of Michigan, the region and the city of Detroit can be an attractive destination for those entrepreneurs uh, to come and set up their businesses. And that includes everything from, can they send their kids to school? What are the, what's the tax rate? Uh, can they get supported financially from either VCs, angel investors, or banks? And so part of the discussion up here this weekend at the conference is setting the correct environment to foster that sense of entrepreneurship. Adrian, do you think that we have set the right environment? And what are some more keys that you would add to that to, to have the right environment for entrepreneurs? You know, first of all, I think within the city, we've really streamlined process and, and made it easy to open a business in the city. It's not, you know, the red tape and bureaucracy. I don't like to say those words, but um, it's really something where it's, uh, it's an easy task. You want to focus on your business, not really getting your business in the city. So that's been wonderful. Um, and there's great programs too, Motor City Match. There's Grow Detroit's Young Talent, where we're engaging, you know, an entrepreneur will come in, but we're giving the kids and the, an opportunity, the youth an opportunity in the neighborhoods to come into open business or to see at least businesses open. So there are a lot of things uh, by government and by the private sector that are creating opportunity for folks to come in and to be able to flourish in the city of Detroit. You know, but it's, it's by no means an easy task. I mean, when you're an entrepreneur, you've got an idea and you're starting a, you're starting a business and you very well know this very well, Dennis. I mean, this is, this is, this is not for the faint of heart when you're starting a business. If, if it were easy, everyone would be doing it, right? Right. right. <laughs> so, so there um, it is. Shelly, go ahead and tell us a little bit about uh, Challenge Detroit and how you're bringing people into the city and saying, look, stay here, live here, work here, and, and, and we want you to make Detroit your home. Yes, so we are a nonprofit organization that runs a fellowship program, and it's a one-year program where we bring both individuals from across the country, um, but also we want to keep native Detroiters here and provide job opportunities and um, the opportunity to make an impact. So our fellows work at a Detroit-based company Monday through Thursday, and then every Friday we come together and do projects with nonprofits to really make an impact here in the community. All right, so how many people are we talking about that has kind of gone through the program? Sure, so we have a cohort of about 30 individuals each year. We're just uh, nearing the end of our fourth cohort. So we have 90 alumni in Detroit. We have 30 more that are about to graduate and we will be welcoming approximately 30 more um, in September. Oh, that's, that's great, mm -hmm. that's great. Um, Dennis, talk to me a little bit about some of the challenges that I think that um, small business owners are, are facing right now in the city of Detroit. Well, I think uh, first and foremost is access to capital. And I think if you look at the nature of entrepreneurs, uh, they have big ideas, They're young men and women with big ideas, and a lot of the time they may not have the background or the exposure necessary to put a packet together to take to a traditional bank to go get a loan. They may not have a credit to go get a loan. So this mayor, Duggan, and Adrian and their team have done an outstanding job at trying to A, encourage banks to lend in Detroit. There's Motor City Match, there's Invest Detroit and other entities that exist to help those entrepreneurs gain the financing that they need to pursue their dreams. And I think really that to me is uh, the biggest challenge. A lot of challenges that people cite in other areas like talent, like real estate, like finding a place to set up your shop. 
that's not an issue here. We opened up our restaurant downtown in August, and a lot of people were saying, oh, you're going to have a tough time finding good people. We have 52 employees at Central Kitchen and Bar. They are all outstanding. Our customer service is phenomenal, uh, thanks to some tutoring from Adrian. And, uh, and so finding the talent was not an issue. Getting a good lease was not an issue. And fortunately for us, the capital was not an issue. But the capital gap, I think, is the biggest is the biggest issue. I don't know what you guys find. Well, so no, talk to me, Adrian. That in terms of what Dennis was talking about, and you've worked with some of his talent in helping them train and and to keep them there. What is that like? You know, really, you just you want to create a culture that folks want to be part of. You know, and I think with Central and some of the other more successful restaurants and businesses, is you've created something that you're not just part of. This is what you do. You come every day, and you look forward to being part of it. And it's about community and it's about your internal customer. It's about who you come and you see every day. So really it's quality of life and that's uh, you know what, what Dan has done on a major scale and what a lot of other businesses are doing, what we're doing in the, in the city to, to change culture as well so folks will want to come and be part of what's going on in working for government as well. Yeah, you know, and that kind of leads me to my next question that I'd like all three of you to comment on. What do you feel the perception of Detroit is now? I mean, and if you, even if you look over the last five years, there's been a massive change. But in terms of what each of you do, I'm going to start with you, Adrian. What do you think when, when you're talking with people about coming here, about working here, about starting a business here, how has that perception of the city changed? I mean, it's changed. In good, in good and bad ways. I mean, in, in good ways. You know, um, I think when you, you know, people still perceive Detroit, depends where you are. You know, sometimes we travel and, oh, Detroit, are you, you know, and there's, there's, there's that, still that negative perception. Some, some people come here and they expect big, grandest, grandiose things, and it's still a lot of work. We still have challenges. Um, but we're really ironing those out, and, and I think the majority that come here, um, they're, they're happy to be here. And the younger generation is moving downtown. They're moving into the neighborhoods. Um, families are moving back. Um, so I think it's something that, um, you know, we have a lot of work. You're only as good as your last, last performance, and we have a lot of work ahead of us. And everyone has their sleeves rolled up, and that's what we're doing. Shelly, what would you say in terms of when you're, you're retaining people for your program, what are some of the perceptions that they have of the city? Sure. I would say a big focus right now that we're seeing with the fellows in our program is their interest in the neighborhoods, which is really positive and really important. And I just highlight a project that we actually did with the mayor's office this past fall, where we really focused on the businesses in the neighborhoods. And so our fellows um, went out into all the different districts and they talked to small business owners and they captured their stories. And that information, um, those stories that they gathered were compiled into a business directory that the mayor's office put out. And it's been quite a success and there'll be continued updates with more and more businesses, but really getting that visibility for those small businesses in the neighborhoods and having our fellows go out and you know, eat in those shops and, and restaurants and, and really get a dialogue going among their friends and their colleagues has been a really, really positive experience for us. And, and what would you say, Dennis? I mean, we do concentrate a lot, and when we're talking about business, people automatically think downtown because that's where the most density is right now in terms of, of putting of putting business. But you do have um, a lot of neighborhood pockets and, and things like Live Six, where they're um, revitalizing right. certain areas and, and, and really trying to help support entrepreneurs and small business in those neighborhoods. Um, how important is it to make sure that we're we keep pushing that? It's very important. It's a focus of our practice. We, I don't know if you're familiar with the second Meyer Anchored Shopping Center mm -hmm. that was built at uh, McNichols and Grand Rivers, 28 acres. My firm, we did develop that project. So there's a 220,000 square foot Meyer. Uh, there's a gas station and some other neighborhood supporting retail. I think that's where the opportunity is. And when you talk about entrepreneurs who may not be as well healed as those that are looking to play downtown, it's a lot less expensive to invest in the neighborhoods, and the demand uh, way, way, way outshines the supply. There's a lot of uh, hunger in the neighborhoods for hospitality, for retail, um, for just professional services. And so I know we are looking into different neighborhoods on the outskirts of the city to make investment. I think others should too. All right. Dennis Arster Jr. and Shelley Danner and Adrian Tanone, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Wonderful. Thanks thank so you. much. It's an honor. Good.